hoping for a little bit more of an audience, but this is okay. Um, I'd like for all of you guys to think about whether or not you personally believe that people that are homosexual were born that way, or whether they have made a life choice, or have been under circumstances in their lives that has made them felt that way. Um, I was planning on doing a little like survey, but it's okay. Um, oh yeah, everyone put your head on the desk, except for, you know, and um, if you believe that people are born that way, you could raise your hand right now. If you believe that it's uh, something that develops over someone's life, or that it's a choice, also raise your hand now. Okay. Um, so, if um, there was a lean towards the side that people have made choices or developed the, that part of themselves over their lives, and that's what I would expect from most people. Um, one thing that through my life I have come to realize is that people are born that way and it is not a life choice. There, I have a friend and I was five years old, he's my ward, and um, we would hang out all the time. Uh, we would play day together, he had pools, so we hung over there a lot. And um, so ever since five we've been hanging out. I remember one day specifically, we were five years old, kindergarten, we went to kindergarten together, same teacher, and uh, and I came over and he's like, hey, let's play dolls. I was like, wait, what? I mean, like, I like my G.I. Joes, my cars, but he wanted to play dolls. And I was like, okay. So we played dolls all day and I, it was just a little different. And I never really thought much about it until um, it turned out that my friend Joe turned out to be homosexual. And it's something that we could have all seen, but when it kind of, when we finally realized that, it made me think back to when we were five and made me realize that, you know, this isn't something that has happened in the last year or so. It's something that he's had to deal with his whole life. Um, and like when we were five, it wasn't something, you know, five-year-olds don't really talk about, oh, he's gay or not. It's just something that was part of his personality that uh, came out through the rest of his life. Now, some people might say, just because someone likes to play dolls, uh, that doesn't make them gay, which is true. He might have been just a very feminine person, but um, it turned out that he was gay. And that's something that I thought was very telling. Um, now, that's not a something that, like a fact that you can test, but something that has been tested are three facts that I think show that it's uh, something that you're born with rather than something that develops. Um, the three that I came up with are, and that I, I did research and found, the brain, hormones, and genetics. You guys can see that okay? Um, the brain, the thing that I thought was very interesting was that there's a part of the brain that is twice as large in a male as it is in a female. And this is the part that determines the sexual orientation. It's called the INAH3, I, you know, I don't know what that stands for, but that's what it's called. And it's twice as large in a male as it is in a female. They did studies on people that died of AIDS in the 80s. On, uh, because of their homosexuality that, and it turns out that the part of this brain is actually the size of a female's in the homosexuals. So you might be able to say that it was throughout their life that it shrunk or that the AIDS might have had a problem with it, but to me this is a fact that really solidifies the case that that you're born that way instead of it developing. Uh, the hormones, um, I mean, you don't have to do this right now, but it's a fact that the more testosterone in your body, the 
more different than these two fingers would be. Is that two minutes left or two minutes total? Two minutes left. Um, and um, so it's a fact that homosexuals, homosexual women, it's not the same in men, but the gap here is twice as large within women as it is men. So that's another thing that's you know a fact that you can see and be tested that it's something that is there. And genetics, uh, it's also a fact that people that have a gay sibling are twice as likely to be homosexual than someone that doesn't have any gay people in their family. Now there's there's things that people would argue for each of these that could change someone's mind, but these are three things that um, have really solidified the fact that people are born that way. Now, um, the problem is that people are discriminated against and they people view it as, because it's a choice, that it makes them lesser, but I think it should be seen more as someone that's born with dark skin rather than someone that has made the choice to commit some kind of unforgivable sin. Um, so I think that as a community and as in Rexburg, um, if we can be accepting and realize that it's not a life choice, but more of something that someone has to live with, that it will make us a more, um, make us a easier, a more peaceful and less conflicting community and that we will have less problems with dealing with other people. Now, um, the, I would like to ask all of you to, this is really simple and I think it will make a big difference in a lot of people's lives, that um, maybe for two weeks specifically try to not use gay or homosexual or, you know, as a derogatory term instead of, because I hear it a lot every day, I'm sure you guys hear it also, but think of it more as something that someone's got to deal with themselves and not something that they choose to or something that's wrong with them. Um, I personally have had experiences that have helped me to come to this realization and I hope that uh, I've helped you guys to realize something also. Um, my friend Joe, he was gay when he was five and he's gay today and I think that's something that we should all realize and change our lifestyles based on that.